All right, so, sir. Go ahead, Doug. Yeah. Um, all right. So we didn't finish this piece here. Does there, anybody need a copy of that? You guys got it? Everybody's got it? Because I'm about to write it. Oh, no. Again, Jeff. There it is. All right. Uh, let's see. So let me kind of rewrite what we've got here so I can see it better. Okay. So it sounds very familiar. This is the same old question. Find the equation of the tangent line, right? Oh yeah, you gotta remember I've got this. Don't do that to yourself, Jeff, just, okay. So how do we always do this kind of problem? Find the equation of the tangent line to the graph, blah, at blah. What do I do first? Take the derivative. Now, of course, that's its own process now, right? So how do I do that derivative? Three x squared, that kicks ass. Right? Good old chain rule, because y is an implied function of x. Now, what, what do I have to use here? Product rule. Product rule. That's right. So it'll be, can we just do it? What's the derivative of x? One. One. And what's the derivative of y? Y prime. Okay, so I just did ch uh, product rule, right? I just did the first piece times the second, and then the first piece times the derivative of the second. Okay. Maybe, 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 maybe. You guys all right out there? No. That was a good thing. Huh? Sorry? What? Oh, let go of the quiz. <laughs> let go of it right now. <laughs> You'll be able to make corrections. If you do better on the test, your quiz grade can go up again if you make corrections, right? All this kind of shit. So just let it go. I'm not going to start singing to you. Don't worry. Let it go. No, oh, sorry. No, you no. That's the wrong reaction. Your reaction should be, "Oh, thank God." All right. So let's go a little bit slower here. Here we go. So now I'm looking at each piece of this as its own little function, which is basically what we do when we have multiple terms in a row. Don't I kind of attack each term, derivative, derivative, right? As we go along, you guys with me? So the derivative of x cubed, easy, right? It's 3x squared. Is everybody with me? <clears throat> and the inside is just x. So its derivative would be 1. That's why it doesn't show up for chain rule. I am not following. Wait a minute. You have to be. So if I give you y equals x cubed, what is y prime? Oh, okay. Okay, that's all we're doing. That is it right there, yes? Mm -hmm. Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. No question. And the inside is not a function of it's just x it's not a function of x something more than just x is the inside of this guy more than just x yes oh shit i don't know exactly what it is but it's some function of x so then I, i'm gonna have to do the chain rule because i have an inside function but what's the outside function just the cube i know how to do that shit what happens there the three comes down y squared but then the inside function gets a turn that's that's it Again, look at y as a placeholder for some ugly big s. So for example, what I'm trying to say is this. What if I had to do this derivative here? Uh, what do you got, Jeff? You could do it. Just throw something down. There's some writing. Good, good, good. Look at that. Oh, that's, oh, you guys excited about this shit? All right. So what if I had to do, you, you couldn't even see it, could you? What if I had to do this guy's derivative? Does it even really matter on the first step what I threw in here? No. no. Now, I can't, you can't control, you're going to look at it and go, oh my God, right? But the very first step doesn't matter. Well, how do I do the first step? The three comes down. Stuff. So that, so here, implicit is just saying, all right, all right, all right. Why is some funky, weird looking thing? 
I'm just going to put Y for you so you can really focus. Right? So instead of, I really want this to make sense, because what would I do here? Times the derivative of stuff, right? So all we're doing is saying, man, that's great. Let me just call it Y for a minute. Let me just call that stuff Y, because then the idea is that. Of course it is. So we're just replacing whatever ugly function it is with just the letter Y, so I can kind of focus better. So understand it's making it easier to look at is what it's really doing. Okay, coming back, coming back. On this side, uh, you can look at it a few different ways. I mean, the seven just comes for the ride, or you can look at it as seven X times Y, it doesn't matter. That's a product rule, right? So I got to do the derivative of the first piece times the second, plus leave the first piece alone, derivative of the second piece. So I'm just writing the rule, right? What's the derivative of 7x? And what's the derivative of y? I have no idea, so I'm just going to leave it y prime. I don't know what function y is, so I can't take its derivative, so I just have to leave it as y prime. Okay, so now we're caught back up to here. Sorry? It's the same thing, right? I'm sorry. So I just kind of, well, I didn't really skip this step, I just did some more explanation, but it's just, see, we got to the same place, right? Same place. Is there any more calculus left to do in this problem? No, done all the calculus. So now it's algebra's turn, right? What do I have to do? What do I need? What information do I need to find the equation of the line? Y prime. I got to know what the slope is. I already know what the point is, right? 4, 2. I just need to know what the slope is. So I need to solve this thing for y prime. So what do I do to solve this for y prime? Now I would do this. I would add this and subtract this to keep my y prime stuff positive. You guys kind of with me? So what's really cool about algebra is it says, just swap these things. All right, let me see. Let me see. I'm going to write down what the answer is, and you guys can double check me if you want to. Because again, if I take a y prime out of here, take a y prime out, it would be y prime times this shit, then I want to divide by that shit. What is it, sorry? What about it? Oh, that's what I, I didn't get. Oh, 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 never mind. I thought you were I'm sorry. Yeah, this is it. All right? Look, he's really quiet. All right, do it. All right. Do you need to see how that happened? Oh, add this, bam, subtract this, bam. Yeah. It's this idea. 10 minus 4 is 6. Therefore, 10 minus 6 is 4. That's the idea. So that, And again, if you can show yourself the algebra. Yeah. Would it matter if you did the, if you the seven It wouldn't matter. It just have an extra negative. That, and, and so I try to keep my stuff that I'm interested in positive because negatives are another place where we can make mistakes real easy. Yeah. Okay, maybe... You guys look beat up. I'm sorry. Quiz, man. Oh, let the quiz go. Shit. Oh, my God. Forget the damn quiz. So every quiz is going to be roughly 3% of your grade. You can make your quiz grade go up twice, yes? Okay, let that sink in. Let it go. Cleansing breath. Jeff curves grades if necessary. That's another thing. Okay, come back to me. Focus. Yes, maybe? Okay, I love you guys. All right. 
Tonight you'll be laying in bed. That quiz, man. All right. <laughs> I can relate, trust me. All right. I've given myself no room for this, but we don't need that much room for part B. Uh, real quick, how do I get the slope that I need? Plug in x and y. Yeah, so now I have a slope that is dependent on x and y, which again, makes sense. I need to be able to plug the complete point in because it can kind of curve back on itself. So just plug in x in is not good enough anymore. So y prime at, this little bar here is a nice way of saying at. I think I've used it before, right? It would be 3 times 4 squared minus 7 times 2 all over 3 times 2 squared plus 7 times 4. Needle. Whatever the shit that is. Let's see. Uh, oh, 48 minus 14 is 34. Is that right? Over. Is that right? What happened? Yeah, 40, right? Which reduces to all the way down to 17 twentieths. All right. And then you get to do some algebra. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. So Y minus 2, right? 4, 2 is the point, equals 17 twentieths X minus 4. So Y equals 17 twentieths X minus, well, you could do it, Jeff, 68 twentieths. 17 fifths, even better. Thank you. Plus 2, right? All right, this is all boring algebra. Come on. Minus 7 fifths. Yeah, 17 twentieths x. Yeah, this will be minus 7 fifths because 2 is 10 fifths. There's the tangent line. Oh, boy. Okay. And, all right, the normal line, can somebody remember what the normal line was? So I would do all the same work, except the slope I would put in here would have been what? Negative 20 over 17. And then I would just do all the same work. I'm not gonna do it. I just wanted to introduce to you what the normal meant. So can you just do that and then? You put in negative 20 over 17 here and you do all the same shit. It's just going to be a little grosser because now the bottom is 17, so it's not going right. to be as pretty. But it's all the same shit, right? Okay, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> that quiz, man. All right. So, now, let me ask you this question. Uh, how would we figure out the derivative of natural log? Now, think about this. This is section 3.6. 3.5 is implicit. 3.6 comes after 3.5. Therefore, 3.6 probably requires me to use implicit. Does that make sense? We would have done the natural log derivative much earlier because isn't natural log kind of a standard function, right? We would have done it earlier if we could have. So there must be some reason we have to know implicit differentiation to be able to do this thing. I love you guys. Is this written in a form that requires implicit, yes? I don't remember this. What is what like is implicit differentiation? So all implicit differentiation is. All right. So so okay. Let's start with what explicit. Explicit is everything we did before three five. Explicit differentiation is when it's already solved for y or already solved for f of x because those are the both same thing. Yes. So I have y explicitly as a function of x. Right? Or e to the tangent x, whatever. So that is explicitly a function of x because I know y equals this. I can see it. Implicit means it's kind of hidden, it's kind of buried. But I really, how do I take this guy's derivative? What do I actually do? Somebody help me out. How do I take this guy's derivative? What would I do? What do I write here? Oh, you took the derivative of this side. Yes? Okay, because the derivative of y is y prime. We already know that, don't we? We knew the derivative of y is y prime. Do you understand why I'm making a big deal out of that? Because implicit does the same damn thing. 
It's just the whys can show up wherever they want to because it hasn't been explicitly solved as a function of X. Okay. So, and it's a good question. It's a really good question you just asked. I love it. Basically, you said, what the shit did we just do? But I don't think I've made this... Oh, God. Forgive the pun. I haven't made this explicit enough, but um, this is what this means. So, so this is easy because that is why prime, we didn't even think about the fact that we were taking its derivative. That's what we're doing, though. And then the other side is easy. So if I have a function like this now, now let's do this. Well, let's see. All right, let me see if you guys, well, all right, let's try this out. Oh, sure, why not? Why do, why do I have to make one so gross? It's not too bad. So help me out here now. See how this is uh, implicitly right now? So I would do y prime equals, now what I have to do here? Good. 2xy plus x squared y prime, right? Plus 1. Derivative, derivative, derivative. I'm just taking the derivative of both sides. And how do I take the derivative of stuff separated by pluses and minuses? I just take the derivative of each term. Bam, 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 bam. So to be honest, this is nothing new. We just haven't looked at it when it's written in this weird way. So then I would solve for y prime. Jeff, you don't want an equal sign. Try again, buddy. I'm going to subtract this over. Is that cool? So I can get all my y primes together. Yeah, I'll show you all the steps this time. Y prime comes out. I don't think I'm going to try to do what I was going to do with this. I could, but it's just too much. Fun. So, do you guys, do you guys see how I could solve this for y? Oh, let me see if I could do this. All right, all right, all right. I could solve this for y. Do you guys agree with me? How would I solve that for y, this, this function here? Subtract x squared minus y. Yeah. And then I can take an x, a y out. And then I get this. Yes? All right. Stay with me now. This is... Uh, 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 all right. I don't want to do it. I'm not going to do it. Screw it. If I took this guy's derivative, it would equal this if I put that y in here. That's what this means. I know. I don't want to do it right now. We got too much other shit to do. If I, and I really want you to understand, if I took this guy's derivative and I got y prime, this must equal this. It has to because they both represent the derivative of y, yes? So if I plug this in here, these will simplify to be the same thing. They have to. They have to. Because y prime shouldn't depend on which way I did it. That wouldn't make any sense. The slope changes based on what you did. Whoa, shit, no. It's not some quantum, we have to look at it to make something happen, shit, right? Sorry, okay. Um, all right, so let's come back to, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Let me write this again. This looks like such an innocuous little dude, right? But some of you guys might know this derivative already, but just pretend like you don't. There ain't no way in hell. Do you, do you want to do the limit definition? The limit definition? I mean, what do you do with this? What do you do with a problem like that? What do you do with a problem? No, sorry. I said I wouldn't say. So watch this. This is so cool. Can you rewrite this? in some different form, considering it's a log, right? What's the other form you can write this in? No, 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 good Lord, okay. No, 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 log base E does not exist, stop okay. it. It doesn't? It does, but we don't write it ever, Okay. right? Sort of like if you put a two in a square root, isn't that kind of a little like, what, what are you doing? Yes, maybe, no. If somebody put this, Oh. Can anybody tell me, doesn't that feel like, what are you doing? Yeah. Doesn't it? Some degree? Okay, we never write ln as log base e, ever, ever, ever. Same reason we don't write square root of x with actual 2 in it. Yeah. All right, I know it seems a little, I don't care what it seems. Okay. Now try again. Logarithms are inverses of 
exponential. So what's the other way to write this? X equals e to the y. Yes, think about it. Is everybody cool with that? How do you read this? E to the y equals x. Yes? No? Do we know how to take the derivative of e to something? Yeah. Hell yeah, it's one of our favorites, right? It's one of our favorites. If you had to pick a favorite derivative, wouldn't it be that? Okay. How do you take, so now I'm gonna do the derivative. How do you do the derivative of x? One. Holy shit, how do you do the e to something? Y prime. Yeah, e to something y. times y prime. I appreciate you put it out front, but I'll just do it like that for right now. Is that cool? Yeah. Is everybody with me? So then what's y prime equal? I like it. And what was e to the y? I've got it written right there. e to the y is x, so y prime equals 1 over x. Sure! Isn't that cool? This is sort of like I was talking about earlier, but it was a gross function, right? But this is nice. x is e to the y, so if I see an e to the y, I can replace it with x. So what is the derivative of natural log? 1 over frickin' x. 1 over frickin' x. Now let me make a little point here. Can somebody please tell me what a natural log looks like? Uh, that looks more like exponential. There it is. So what's this domain? Yeah, greater than 0. 0 to infinity with a parenthesis on 0. What does this guy look like? Anybody know? Come on, you have to use both hands. Come on, both hands, don't you? This. Yes? Yes? What's its domain? Uh, everything except zero. Everything except zero. Do you see a problem then? Do you see kind of a problem in this statement? They don't have the same domains, do they? All right, this is going to become more of an issue when we get to antiderivatives, but right now I want you to realize this equals this. What would this look like? What was wrong with natural log of x? Why doesn't it appear back here? Because I can't take the natural log of a negative number. Will I ever have to if I put that there? No. So then this looks like that. Yes? Will you specifically write it out with the absolute value bracket? Like when we do the positive with this? Or will it just Not necessarily. There might be something where they give it to you like this, where this is going to become more uh, something you got to be careful with is, like I said, when we get to antiderivatives. Yeah. Okay. Which just sounds exciting, right? I like it. I don't. Aw. Aw. <laughs> do you feel better about chain rule, Michelle? Yes, I do. Okay. So, yes, so just, just. I like it better. All right. So maybe, maybe that, that'll extend to antiderivatives. We'll, we'll see. Okay. All right. Now. <laughs> All right, cool, I got time, I don't believe it. So, help me out. So now we know this fact. We know that if f of x is natural log of x, I won't put the absolute value in for now, it's gonna become more of a thing later. f prime of x is one over x, yes? All right, so, do this guy's derivative, please. <clears throat> Wait, no, don't, don't say it, don't say it, don't say anything, I love you. Do it real quick, and then I'll ask. Sorry. Everyone just did it? Okay, negative 1 over sine x? <laughs> no. No? Ha, ha. <laughs> Come on, we know better than that. Come on. Sorry, man. Don't feel bad. How do you do chain rule? What's the outside function? Natural log. Natural log. What's, how do you do the derivative of natural log of something? Your natural log of something is 1 over something, yes? Times derivative of the inside. That rule doesn't change. It doesn't change. It never freaking changes because it can't. It's a rule, right? It was built off of any functions anywhere. And what's happening? Sorry. Derivative of ln is 1 over x. True. Yeah. So derivative of ln stuff is 1 over stuff times the root of the inside. Oh, I just wrote it. All right, so what's the root of the cosine? Negative sine. 
And what's a better way to write that? Negative tangent. Negative tangent. I like the emphasis on that. All right. Freakadelic? All right, all right, all right. This sucks. I can't do as much as I wanted to. Oh, by the way, uh, by the way, a very important announcement that I just sort of forgot. 3.8 homework is extra credit. Bruh. Yeah, we say that before we go any further. I think it's 3.8. Yes. All right. Hopefully I didn't just say the wrong thing. I can't remember now. Shit. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> no, it's not even that. I know it's 3.8. Uh, I can't remember if they do inverse trig yet. No. Why don't they? Did they miss inverse trig somewhere? Oh, they did inverse trig before, Jack. Oh, okay, okay. Shice, so much shit we got to do. All right. So what about, how would I do this? Derivative. We know now. We know exactly how to do this. We know the process. We have to. We have to know the process. I had this weird shit. What did I do? I rewrote it in a different form based on functions I know. How do I rewrite inverse sine of x equals y? Yes, x equals sine y. Is everybody cool with that? That's what that means, right? No? I could take sine of both sides. Sine inverse sine cancel. X equals sine y. Come on. How do I take this guy's derivative? I'll do this side. All right, I'm done. You guys do the other <laughs> side. I did half of it. Come on. Uh, y prime sine y times y prime. Cosine y times y prime. So what's y prime? Uh, one, over y. 1 over cosine y. That is not good enough, right? We need it to be a function of x. Because wasn't the original explicit? And then we did weird shit to it? All right, I really want you guys, yes? Do you replace the y with the x function at the beginning? There's a few different ways to do this. The easiest way to do it is to realize that this defines a triangle. This defines a triangle. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? Yes. What is sine? Sine of something equaling some ratio. Isn't that ratio of sides of a triangle? So if this is y, I feel like you got it. This has got to be, oh. yes, good. Isn't sine defined to be a certain mm -hmm. ratio of sides of a right triangle? So what side would be x? This kind of sucks, but too bad. This side. And what side would be 1? And what do I need for this, to rewrite this? I need to know what the shit cosine y is, so all I need to know then is what this side is, yes? Square root of 1 minus x squared, kick ass. Good old Pythagorean theorem. 1 squared minus x squared equals this side squared. So then square root, I get 1 minus x squared squared. Okay. So what is this? What is the cosine of y then? <laughs> yeah, so cosine of y would just be this over 1, yes? Okay, so there you go. The derivative of inverse sine is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Yes? Why did we make it implicit after the explicit? Here? Yeah. Why because do that? you know? All right. The only way we know how to do the derivative of a function we haven't looked at yet is limit definition. Yeah. So we could do that. We could throw the inverse sine of x plus h minus the inverse sine of x over h and take the limit. Does that sound... Like anything we ever want to do. No. no. Good Lord, no. No. So thankfully, we've developed this implicit differentiation idea where if I can rewrite something I don't know in terms of functions that I know, right? Same thing we did with natural law. We made it in terms of E. I know E, and I know implicit, which means I know all of it. I don't know this. Ah, I know this guy's derivative. Easy shit, right? So then you can solve for y prime. This step is the part that you got to get used to. I could actually figure out what cosine of y is because I knew the original. Maybe, maybe. Can you guys take a minute and figure out the derivative of this? Wait, is it the 
the same thing. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, I don't know what the shit that is. So now we have a method for more functions. You notice how we keep the learning rules and different methods. So then I can expand the number of things I know the derivative of. Even if you never wanted to, it's too bad. So one little thing you have to be careful about, let's see. It basically feels exactly like the other one did, right? How do I do this derivative? One equals, good, negative sine y times y prime, because the inside's a function of x. So then y prime equals So now I need to know what sine is. Sorry, sine y. I, I'm sorry. That's a little joke for myself. Um, so this sets up a triangle that I could have drawn from the beginning, but we'll do it now. So what's the angle here? Y. Good. That's the angle. It's freaking angle. So which side is x now? It's going to make a little more sense. This guy and this guy. So, of course, this is the same thing in it. So do you see, how is this related to the derivative of inverse sine? Yeah, same thing but negative. Doesn't that make sense? It's kind of like what co-stuff does. Isn't co-stuff negative of the other stuff? Isn't that cool that it's still happening even though it's inverse shit? Let's do one more, one more. Um, I'll just let go of trying to do more stuff. It's okay, Joe. Uh, real quick, we'll do this one together. This one's going to be more interesting. Well, a little bit more interesting. Okay. So obviously the first step is to take tangent of both sides. So now I've got a function I know the derivative of. Then you take the derivative. The derivative is tangent. Secant squared. So y prime equals 1 over secant squared y, which you can also write as What's 1 over secant? Right, cosine squared. Cosine, I can also write as cosine squared y. So all i got to do now is figure out what cosine y is and square it. Let me stop for a minute. This feels basically the same way, right? I like it. So this sets up, believe it or not, a triangle with an angle of y. Right, so now it's tangent y is x over 1. Where's x? Opposite. Yeah, that's the y side. And where's 1? The x side, I like it. So to figure out what cosine is, I need to know what this side is. So what's cosine now? Yeah, 1 over square root of x squared plus 1. So what is that squared? Because I need it squared, right? Did you see that? 1 over x squared plus 1. There you go. That's the derivative of tangent. I'm sorry, inverse tangent. What do you think the derivative of inverse cotangent would be? x squared plus 1. I understand. I understand why you might think that. So we could do the same way we could, we could figure it out, right? All right. I think that might be... We got the three main ones down, right? Sine, cosine, and tangent. We could still do secant, cosecant, and cotangent inverse, right? All right. Just a just a real quick. I I I, I think it's it's okay, John. It'll be okay because we have a lot to do for a couple of days. So I think this next test might not cover all of chapter three, but 
Uh, oh yeah, that's true. Monday, I'm gonna bring the practice test, right? I kind of meant maybe I'll put it up if I think about it. I'll put it up on Canvas over the weekend. Um, what we're about to get into involves a skill that people don't develop enough in their students, which is the ability to write. Yeah, we never stay the whole time. Buckle in, kids. Um, <laughs> so look at this first one. 40 feet of fencing to enclose a rectangular space. Write the area of the rectangular space as a function of width. Sorry? Not yet. Yeah, I could give it to you. I don't know why I didn't give it to you. I'm trying to save time. So think about that. Can you draw that picture real quick for me? And can you tell me, so let me ask you this, what do I tell you? What do I tell you? So what do you know for sure, no question? Yeah, you know the perimeter. And what do I ask you? Area. Area. Right? So what's the formula for what I tell you? Sorry? Let's draw this picture first. Let's see. Bop, 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 bop. Sorry? Oh, okay. That's what I ask you. I'm asking for the formula for what I tell you, right? So I, I call these tell me, ask me problems. Now, I didn't give you any variables, so you get to pick your variables. What do you want your variables to be? What? I love you guys. X and Y, is that all right? I would use L and W, it doesn't matter. Let's use X and Y. Okay, X, Y. So what do they tell me? They tell me 40 feet all the way around. So what's the formula that goes with that? 2X plus 2Y plus 2Y equals 40, yes? We're not gonna be crazy and only go halfway, yes? So all my pigs just have to turn and then they can just walk away, yes? Why'd you use two? So how many X's are there to get around this oh. whole thing? Yeah, so I wanna, Put fencing all the way around. If I only did it halfway, then like I said, my little pigs could just turn this way and walk. Yay, I'm gone. So I want it all the way around. And what do they ask me for? The area as a function of width. So they want area as a function of width. But right now, what's area? X times Y. So what is my, is everybody cool with that? That's what the area is based on my picture. And where did we come up with the picture? We drew it. Where did we get the variables? We made them up. Could your variables be different? different? Hell yeah. Y and X don't mean shit. Right? Okay. What is wrong with this? Is this the answer? No. Hell no. Because right now it's a function of what? Area. No, area is not a function Sorry. of area. Oh. Area is a function of length and width. Ah, oh, shit. So the number of variables in that equation is too damn high. Sorry, I had to make that. Um, I know this though, don't I? Isn't that a relationship between the two? Can't I solve for the variable I don't want so I can replace it? I always think of this as being very subversive, very invasion of the body snatchers. I want to replace something with something else, right? In the, in the night. All right. How do I solve this for, uh, what do I don't, what do I not want in this? Let me try to make my grammar at least. I, no, I want X. The way I drew it, I don't want Y. So it depends on the way you draw it. Doesn't, and again, variables don't mean shit. Um, so I don't want Y. So let me solve this for Y. What do you get when you solve this for Y? Uh, y equals minus X. Yeah, you can divide by 2. That's nice. So I get 20 minus X. Okay, let me stop for a minute. I haven't really done much of anything. But now I can rewrite this as X times Y. So now I've got a formula for area. Right? This is going to become important in this next section we're going to do and in a section in chapter four for sure. All right, that's enough. We'll stop there. I'm not going to try to cram more in your brain. That's enough. That quiz, though. All right. All right. 
So no, Monday I'll have the practice test. Monday I'll tell you exactly what's going to be on the test. More than likely it won't be all of Chapter 3. We're not going to get through all of Chapter 3 on Monday. Wait, when is the test? When is the test? Next Friday. Next Friday. A week from today. Yes. There's always...